Hi there. Let's talk about the Battle of Alia and the first sack of Rome for the last time. Now, last time, I left us off just as the Gauls were entering Rome. So here we go. So the Gauls came into Rome, and all the guys were standing there in their stately regalia, kind of just waiting for the Gauls, and they came up, and they were kind of impressed by this, and they stared at them kind of in awe, and this Marcus Paprius guy was in the front, and the Celts kind of walked up to him and tugged his beard, and Marcus Paprius replied by punching him in the face, and just a slaughter, that guy's really not reacting. Okay, now he's reacting. So anyway, yeah, a slaughter just started, and... Everyone was just kind of murdered. Well, n not everyone. Um, some people fled up to the Capitoline Hill, and they stayed there. And then they were surrounded by a ring of Gauls, which isn't good. And they took refuge in the Temple of Jupiter on top of that hill. So they were just like, this sucks. We're going to die, and this sucks. And but back in Ardia, Camellus was feeling pretty happy with himself. He just saved the little town, and... But the people came up to him and they were like, maybe we should save Rome, because that would be good. And then he's like, no, I'm not a dictator anymore, and that means that I can't legally save them. Which was actually going to be pretty hard to do if the Senate was surrounded by gulls on a hilltop. Hard, but not impossible. Enter Pontius Cominius. He kind of just volunteered to go up the back way of the Capitoline Hill. The Gauls weren't really guarding it because it was so steep anyway. And he found a little path and he climbed his way up the hill. It was actually supposed to be a pretty hard climb, so a lot of people were wondering how he did it in the... <sighs> what is this new devilry? And he got to the temple, I guess. And he let them know, like, he was like, uh, Camellus is kind of being a jerk and... He wants you to make him a dictator again, so, yeah. And they're like, fine, 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 okay. So, finally, Camellus picked up his ass, and then he finally went over to... Okay, he's passing Rome. Why is he... Okay, he went to Veii. Why is he going to Veii again? Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of soldiers there from the Battle of Alia who fled there. So he walks up to them and gives a really eloquent speech, but I can't really do it justice, so I'm just going to bring out his magic war horn again. And he rallied the troops. He went back down to Rome, and as Professor X would say... Go and save the city! I'm really sorry for that. The Celts back in Rome seem to have found uh, Pontius's trail, and they themselves climb up it seemingly in the same weird messed up way. And when they get to the top, there's these geese on the hill that, since the hill is surrounded, they haven't been fed. And the geese just start charging at the Celts, like, right when they get to the top of the hill, and it wakes everybody up. And the guards come out, and before the Celts can really get up on the hill properly, the guards come out and just, like, slaughter them all and push them down the hill. I prefer to think of the moral of this story, is you should always keep hungry geese around you. So thank you, geese. And no thank you, Night Watchmen. In fact, they were so pissed off at the Night Watchmen because the geese pretty much did his job, and they just, like, trucked him down the hill, too. <laughs> Brennus finally sent someone up to talk to the Romans, and he's like, okay, okay, chill out. Um, we'll leave because we have no food and stuff if you pay us a lot of gold. So just pay us a bunch of gold, and we'll leave. Uh, we'll get our scales out, and so he did. He got his scales out, and the Romans were like, okay, fine, fine, we'll pay you. And they realize that he's messing with the weights. He's messing with the scales, and they're paying more than they should. So they're like, what is up with this? And he's like, uh, you know, screw you. And then he chucks his sword onto the thing to even imbalance it further and screams, Vi Victus, which means, woe to the conquered. But what's this? Are those Romans? Romans in Rome? Is it a Roman army? I think that's a, yeah, that's a Roman army. And that dude in the gold armor at the front. That's Camillus. And he uh, marches down the forum, and then he goes up to Brennus, and he kind of explains, uh, look, I'm the dictator, so any any gold they promised you uh, wasn't authorized by me, so, yeah. And you know what? It's the custom of the Romans to deliver the city with iron, not with gold. That bauble round your neck. 
you pay the iron price for it or the gold? Yes, thank you, Bela. Um, so just a crazy kerfuffle kind of starts up on the streets, but the streets are so narrow and stuff that they can't really fight properly. So the Kelds are like, oh, screw it, we'll just leave them. And finally, the Kelds left Rome. But Camellus wasn't done with them yet. He waited till nightfall, and then he marched out. And then at dawn, he set an ambush and just slaughtered the crap out of the Celts. And it was kind of like, I don't know, this ending just feels really tacked on to me. It's not even in some of the other sources. But it's their big Hollywood finish, and it's Camellus' big ending, so I can't take it away from him, can I? No, so most of the Celts slash Gauls are killed right in that ambush. And some of them flee away, and they flee in little groups. And they're kind of just killed by countrymen or chased by horses to the countryside and eventually slaughtered. So finally, they, they go back to Rome and everyone's kind of bummed and they're all hurt and lots of people are dead and killed by Gauls, so there's not a lot of people left. And Well, some people are like, maybe we should just go live in Veii. It's less destroyed and it's, it's all built up already. It'd be a nice capital. So that'd be great. And Camellus kind of over there is just like, what? Are you kidding me? I just... I just saved this place. I worked so hard to save this place. No. And he gives like, a, I swear, it's like seven pages. It's like a seven page speech. So I'm not going to recite it for you. But by the end, he's declared the second founder of Rome and they decide to stay in Rome. The end. So that was a lot to take in. Now, how much of it was true? Who is this Camellus guy? I've heard the first emperor Augustus inserted him into history as kind of an early analog to himself as part of his infamous PR. Oh, there's a baby stuck to your leg, Augustus. But I've heard the exact opposite too, that Augustus was trying to emulate Camellus, which, if you care, seems more likely to me because Camellus seems to be known before Augustus's time. Plutarch himself is contradictory about Camellus. All the info in the story I just told you that came from Plutarch was from a work called The Life of Camillus. In the middle of his Life of Camillus, he kind of just goes off on a random tangent and out of the blue mentions reading from Aristotle, who was alive very near the time it was set. Plutarch casually mentions that Aristotle had accurate tidings of the sack. He doesn't even mention Camillus and attributes the saving of the city to a man named Lucius. And the only Lucius in the story was that dick, Lucius Albinius, who left his wife by the road to hitch a ride with the virgin. I'd love to read you the piece of writing Plutarch mentions that Aristotle wrote, but it appears to be a lost writing. So it would have been nice for Plutarch to give us a little more on that. Thanks, Plutarch. As for the sack itself, even when archaeologists tried to look for evidence of fires in Rome at this time, they still come up with nothing. Some modern historians believe that the Celts or Gauls took everything that wasn't nailed down, and the Romans paid them to leave because they were never interested in land in the first place. In my opinion, Camellus seems to be an amalgamation of values that the Romans, particularly the rich Romans, held dear. I don't think we'll ever really know how much of this story is true, if any. The sad truth is that the records that would have told us all about the sack and who Camellus really was were used as Celtic kindling and toilet paper during the very sack we've been talking about. What the story can do is, is tell us about the Romans. How the Romans stopped using the hoplite and started the evolution to the Roman legions we find more familiar. How utterly embarrassing it was to have to pay the Celts off to make them leave their own city. To the point of making hilarious excuses as to why it happened. And as an example before I go, let's look at what Livy is really saying during his battle explanation. The rich people fought beautifully and bravely. If it weren't for those terrified or dead poor people fighting with them, they would have been fine. Livy is clearly scapegoating by blaming the entire defeat on the inexperienced poorer soldiers. For Livy, it's impossible to imagine the noble old families of Rome screwing things up to the degree that a bunch of angry Celts come and sack the city. It had to be those stupid plebeians and commoners. The Battle of Allia and Rome's first sack were an interesting thing to look at. It was a very hard topic to find information on, and I hope that if you're looking for information about this historical event, that I could help shed some light on it. That's all I really have to say about Alia, and thank goodness because Alia has taken more than a month of my life and I can't wait to go on to the next battle.
If you notice anything that I got incorrect or wrong, or even worse, uncredited, please leave a comment letting me know, and I will correct it. That was the Battle of Alia and the First Sack of Rome. Stupid flinning balls never work. <laughs>